Good evening, wrestling fans from the world famous AWL Arena in Tokyo, Japan. This is AWL Hontai 396. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. The first, making her way to the ring from Tokyo, Japan. The rest of you, Kurokaji, Watasaki, Ai! And the 16 year old professional wrestling prodigy, Wakazaki Ai, may have bit off a little more than she can chew. She has dropped a public challenge to Akira Merune for a rubber match between the two. And so far we have yet to hear any answer, any response from the Mistress of a Thousand Holds. Will we get one tonight here on AWO Huntai 396? I don't know. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Drop a like, give us a comment, give us a subscribe, and make sure that you stay up to date on all the news from the Animated Wrestling League as we approach our season finale. And her opponent taking her away break from the front office, accompanied by the very kind of assistant. He is the office lady of Saidon J. Takai Rina. This almost unbelievable giantess, another one of the bumper crop of graduates, or at least of new wrestlers in the AWL system that we have seen this season, season 20, where we brought the Joshi division into prominence, into the front line of things. And we are still looking, Sakai Reina, still looking for her first win in the AWL. She is 0-2. Her opponent tonight, Wakazaki Ai, the 16-year-old prodigy, 2-2. Two two. So, Wakazaki Ai, for the first time in her career, the relative veteran and take a look at the size differential here. As soon as Wakazaki Ai comes back up to a vertical base, she barely comes up to the, ch to the chin of the giantess, Sakai Reina. I don't know, I don't know what, what Zaidan J is paying this woman, but it's gotta be something big. She does not need them. We've never seen the very kind assistants get involved in her matches, as we have seen them do with Yamada Jiro and other members of the Zaidan J organization. Picked in the midsection by Wakazaki Ai, showing incredible fighting spirit, but a single forearm completely reverses the polarity of the match. Is Sakai Reina gonna go up to the top rope? Getting up there with incredible ease. Oh no! The knees up on an enormous splash. Excellent counter wrestling by Wakazaki Ai, but can she overcome just the momentous power, strength, size, leverage advantage that Sakai Reina possesses here? I have no idea. Tonight in our main event, we're going to have Tiger on Tiger Violence, the number one contenders match for the Grand Championship. Tiger Mask 2, Tiger the Dark, Tiger Mask W explodes tonight in the main event. That is a main event that's a pay-per-view main event anywhere in the world, ladies and gentlemen, but you get it right here tonight for free on YouTube. If you like our giving away a free show business model and would like to support the Animated Wrestling League, hang on. Two and a half by Wakazaki Ai after one of her signature spin kicks. If you like our giving away a free show business model and want to uh, support us, please subscribe down below. Click that subscribe button, enable notifications, you know all that YouTube stuff. Oh, body scissors! Transition into a single leg crab. That's the type of transition you might expect from the Mistress of a Thousand Holds. By Akira Merune, the veteran of the division. Who Wakazaki Ai beat in her debut match. Who dropped a match, a submission match to Akira Merune not that long after. They're one and one. And hopefully we're going to get to see a rubber match between them, but we don't know. Seven minutes and 35 seconds roughly on the clock. We also have a number one contenders match tonight for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, because Yamada Jiro, Sakai Reina's boss, lost the Intercontinental title last week. Then the two guys who were supposed to get automatic title shots because of the events of the scramble match don't get them. That's wa it's washed away. Those are the rules. Sorry, they suck. But here's the fun thing. The AWO commissioner decided that the great Nuki and 
Takashi Tobu will face each other one on one with the winner to be the first challenger for Kiba Akagi and the and his newly won Intercontinental Championship. So we've got two number one contenders at this tonight. Big power slam by Sakai Reina getting her a pretty decent two count there. But the fighting spirit of a young Japanese high school student. She goes to a sports high school, by the way, so it's okay. They, they, they know she's here. All the forms have been signed. We've got the consent from the parents. We've got the consent from the, from the school. Everybody knows what's going on here. And uh-oh, shades of Anami Toyota with the Ocean Cyclone Stuplex. I uh, have heard tell... Chant of this is wrestling, and yes, it is. Sakai Reina going for a big super. Oh, backdrop driver, Shades Keshimorishima. And Sakai Reina, by knockout, your winner in this contest, points the referee. I think the referee may have called that a little bit too early. Let's see if we can take a look on the replay. See perhaps how Wakazaki Ai took that last bump. There's that Ocean Cyclone Suplex. He kicked out of that fairly, I believe. Difficult to do in the straight jacket, Paul, but here we go. And oh, she, oh no, she took that hard. Here's your winner, Sakai Reina. And that's a first career win for the office lady of Zaidan J. A big win for her, and everything she does is big, because look at her, good grief. Hey, wait a minute, I know that music. Well, we were wondering if we were going to hear from the Mistress of a Thousand Holes. You want to do it one more time? Well, listen to my answer. She, she's not here for Skyrena. The first ever AWL Joshi Champion is here for Wakazaki Ai, the challenge laid down last week. Let's do it one more time. Looks like we are going to get an answer. I'm the mistress of a thousand holds. And, oh, and I'm thinking that answer is... I'm guessing that answer is no. Okay, 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 this is not a match, folks. This is not a, this is not a wrestling match. This isn't, this isn't part of our card for tonight. Wakazaki Ai, who's just wrestled a hell of a contest against Sakai Reina took a bad knock on the head that caused the TKO, that caused the knockout. A few hard shots, left and right, going up and down, collar and elbow tie up. Ooh, twist, bad little twist there. Take down in, oh God, okay. Well, I think we can we can infer from the actions we're seeing in the ring, ladies and gentlemen, that the answer is no. That uh, Kira Meverne doesn't think that now that she's beaten, now that she's gotten her win back over Wakazaki Ai. Wait a minute, Wakazaki Ai coming back. You want to fight me? Okay, fine, we'll fight. You don't want to have a match? You want to have a fight? We'll have a fight. And I'm gonna ta I'm gonna I'm gonna tap you out the last the same way I did last time. Wakazaki's friend. And Wakazaki Ai just tapped out the Mistress of a Thousand Holds. Look at that. Well, whether they're going to do it one more time or not, I think Wakazaki Ai just made her best possible argument. We'll have to see what the commissioner says about that going forward, though. Up next, some tag team action. Yokai Butai versus the pit. A moment ago, ladies and gentlemen, you saw the NR over the names of the Yokai Butai members making their way to the ring. Well, that means not registered, as in they are not registered as a tag team. This will not affect Yokai Butai's standing in the tag team record. The following tag team contest scheduled for one fall in the wrestling first. Accompanied by Ultraman Pistola, the tag team combination of Emerald Dragon and Shinokan Kitsune. Together they are 
Your card, Utala. Shiroke Kitsune and the great Tanuki, who you will see wrestle in the number one contenders match for the IC title a little bit later. They are the number four contenders in the AWL best four for the Tag Team Championship. However, there is no Freebird rule in the AWL, so if this is considered a separate tag team, Emerald Dragon and Shiroke Kitsune, even though they are of the same faction. And now, unfortunately, we're going to have to put up with that damned ring announcer. And not our normal guy. And who's the parent? Is, I mean, there. From the dark side of the moon. You mean their opponent pronoun the boy? Yokto, the dark rabbit of the moon. The high flying acrobat of the pit. Teaming up with their biggest powerhouse, or arguably the biggest ostensibly human powerhouse for this contest. Yokto comes into this match 58 and 60 in his AWL career. Speaking of the powerhouse, speak of the devil, and there he appears. Sombo no Yaiba, 19 wins, 16 losses in his AWL career. I will point out most of those losses actually coming in tag team action. The team of the pit comes into this match 1-1 one and one this season. These two have really taken a back seat to Gamba Shadows, who uh, won and held the AWL World's Tag Team titles for most of this season, to be honest. These two were kind of reduced to the flunkies, the B-team of the pit. Well, with Gamba Shadows defeated, and the tag team titles now in the hands of the Augment, maybe it's time for Yokto and Sombo no Yaiba to take a, a more center stage position, I don't know. And it's going to be the Emerald Dragon and Gyokto starting us off. Powerhouse versus High Flyer. And of course, Emerald Dragon started his AWL career as Wyvern, one of the best High Flyers we've ever seen. Physically and speciesly transformed by that mysterious Amulet of Transfiguration gifted to him by Ultramantis Black. But Wyvern, Emerald Dragon, has not forgotten how to fly! Over the top rope, down to the floor in the opening 30 seconds of this match. And it, getting, a, getting a this is awesome chance in less than a minute. High angle power bomb to the Demon Gi Stay. The mass, well, I used to think the mastermind of the pit. The demon that Gamba originally made his deal with the devil with. To become Gamba Hishidaki and a nasty drop kick to Shiroke Kitsune. I'll remind you that Gisei is not an actual participant in this match, though frankly I do enjoy seeing him getting beat up. As Gyokto decides that what's good for the goose is good for the beetle. For the mantis, I should say. Tag is made, in comes Shiroke Kitsune. And your legal combatants are Shiroke Kitsune and the Dark Rabbit of the Moon, Ultimantis Black, absorbing the punishment. And given that he's not really an active wrestler much anymore, that's not a good strategy for him, I would argue. But this is a distraction. This is mind games. Nobody in wrestling is better at mind games than Ultramantis Black. Wheels within wheels, schemes within schemes with this guy. And th this is broken down almost entirely now. This is what happens when you let men have wrestling matches. This is ridiculous. We're only two minutes in, and all, everybody's all over the floor. The managers are involved. 
nice enzigiri by Shikirike Kitsune to stumble to Yaiba. The tag is made, and finally we've got the two legal fighters in the ring together. Ultimate Black down and out on the outside. As Gyoko grabs a heel hook on the Emerald Dragon, trying to take the legs out from under the bigger man. Good strategy. Yoko's going to be looking for the Mochi Pounder or the Dark Side of the Moon Salt. Emerald Dragon will be looking for the Snapdragon. Sombo no Yaiba will be looking for that Powerbomb Toss, that dangerous, risky, incredibly stupid Powerbomb Toss of his. And should he get back into the mat? Oh, wait a minute. Dragon Drop number one. A move bequeathed to him by his original trainer. But that long, long, thick body of Tsumbo no Yaiba saving him with a foot under the plane of the ropes. And Wyvern looking to get... Oh, Snake Eyes! Snake bites the rabbit, kick to the midsection, back elbow block. Tsumbo no Yaiba looking for that powerbomb toss. Oh, no, 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 he's going to toss him all the way outside of the ring. Down up! Jesus all the way down to the floor. That will break a wing. That will snap your tail in half. Injuries abound whenever Somba Noyaiba is in the ring. I'm genuinely surprised he hasn't broken somebody's neck already. Three. Hey, a sit-out face buster. And when you've, you've got a guy with these bony horns sticking out of his head. Oh, a stunner! to the Dark Rabbit of the Moon. Can somebody please remember who they're supposed to be fighting? Ultramantis Bat Black being not loopy. I think Ultramantis' is game plan here, and I do, not, I do not presume to think as many moves ahead as Ultramantis Black. However, I'm guessing his plan is to keep the forces of the pit on the outside, maybe make it easier to get a win via a countout. He's just going to put himself into the hospital at this rate. What the hell is Gise? Oh, there he is. Are we having an earthquake? Twenty count on the outside here in the AWL, in case you've forgotten. Oh, is Shumake Kitsune being brought in the hard way? Referee's not going to make a disqualification. Oh, no, look at this. Jiroke hit today. Oh, gets not even a thought. Well, that's been five minutes of absolute chaos. A Jiroke hits today. Reverses into a sunset flip, and he's not legal. Your legal fighters are Sombo no Yaiba, the big guy in the ring, and the Emerald Dragon on the outside. Nice arm drag counter by Jiroke hits today. The master of Fox style. Can somebody please remember what the match is? This is insane. Now I'll point out that this particular duo, the Emerald Dragon and Shirake Kitsune, they've never actually wrestled as a tag team before. They've wrestled in trios matches, but never in a two-on-two -two situation. Trios matches in the occasional Atomicos with Ultramantis, who seems to be back up on his feet, ready to go, and you will believe a monster from the underworld can bleed. Dragon. Emerald Dragon. Running Super Hurricanrana. And he's got those wings. Those are not just for show, ladies and gentlemen. I crossbody and he misses clean. Too much damage done on the outside. Good counter in midair, however. But he realized he was under the ropes, and there's the high-flying action from the heavyweight Emerald Dragon. The collar and elbow tie-up. He's going for something big here. Fireman's carry position. Drops his opponent face first across that steel cable that in wrestling and nomenclature we refer to as a rope, though it is not a rope in any way, shape, or form. And Snap Dragon into the cover. One, two... The bridge broken at the last possible second by Gyokdo. I will give the devils their due. Excellent 
awareness, excellent match awareness, if not even ring awareness. He saw the Snapdragon, he saw the bridge, he knew that was going to be it. And Gyokta had to save Sumbun Ayaiba and the map for the forces of darkness. Wrist control going a long way for an arm drag, but it does work. Throws the much bigger Sumbun Ayaiba all the way across the ring, but deep into enemy territory. One, two, no! Yokto not actually breaking it up there. Somebody I have kicking out of his own volition. As the illegal men leave the ring, Emerald Dragon on top in the mount position momentarily goes for a Juji Gatame. The figure 10 hold. Cross arm breaker, cross arm bar, whatever you want to call it. Less than seven minutes on the clock here. Over the top rope, this has been absolute insanity, ladies and gentlemen. This is not what we would usually expect from tag team wrestling in the Animated Wrestling League, but whatever the hell we get. There's, oh, Jesus Christ, right in the corner. And now Shiroke Kitsune getting a dose of damage. Military press power slam by Sombo no Yaiba now down on Dragon with a Emerald Dragon, I should say, with that trapezius hold. And the Emerald Dragon is on spaghetti legs. He's in trouble. Another power bomb. Oh! This time into the other corner. He's being thrown pillar to post. Eesh. One, two, three. What? Okay. Um, Emerald Dragon somehow still alive. And the AWL fans here in the arena showing their appreciation for tag team wrestling. Snap Dragon! Snap Dragon! Snap Dragon! Check to make sure the feet are not on the ropes. One, two, and a second time in the match. The bridge is broken by Gyokto at the last possible second to save the contest for the forces of evil. Well, that's one way to get rid of a rabbit. Normally, I just, I just put them back in their hat. But, you know, whatever. Whatever works for you. Going up, across the top, and down. Emerald Dragon maybe thinking another Snapdragon or a Dragon Drop. He's got, I don't know what he's going, oh! Whatever he was going for there, it didn't work. All right, the nap of the arm. We're 10 minutes in, one. Two thirds of the way through the time limit, all four men in the ring now. But your legal combatants are the Dragon and the Grim Reaper. Nothing is certain in life but death, taxes, and the fact that that freaking hurts. Thumbo no Yaiba. And the fox is nowhere to be seen. Two, three. It took, I think, four powerbomb tosses to put down the Emerald Dragon. But put down he was. Take a look at some of that. The dragon drop early in the match. That was probably some of the best offense. The snapdragon as well. But it was the powerbomb toss out of the camera. Oh gosh. <laughs> the pit moves up to two and one this season. I don't think that's going to be enough to get them into the Forge the Four tournament for next year, but we'll find out. Meanwhile, now, this may be false advertising. I don't know if Ultramantis Black is going to be ready for this match. But I do know he's going to try his best. The following contest is scheduled for one ball, and it is a number one contender's match. The Amicator of Swing League begins the Continental Championship. It is in first, making his way to the ring. From the Deathmatch Circuit, Kakushi. Oh, dude! Takashi Tobu only recently returned to the Animated Wrestling League following a lengthy hiatus due to injury. Uh, actually returned in that six-way scramble match to determine the new Intercontinental Champion. 
Due to his performance in that match, he earned an automatic title shot against the winner of the match, Yamada Jiro. However, so did Chiba Akagi. And Chiba Akagi took the belt before Satsu Kogu or the Great Tanuki had their opportunity. So their automatic matches, their automatic title shots are gone. The AWO Commissioner has actually been quite kind in offering them this second chance to earn a shot at the contender's title and to take that first step down the road less traveled. Now will Ultramantis emerge from the miasma with his man? Yes, he will. Fighting out of the mysterious forest, the Shiginamori, in the realm of the Yokai, Ultramantis Black, bringing these spirits together. Powering the Emerald Dragon and giving guidance and counsel to some of the most one of the most popular trios in the AWL today. It's gonna be a deathmatch guy versus a raccoon dog spirit. I love pro wrestling. Someone's gonna bleed and it's probably Sapchikobu. It's not John Moxley, but he's pretty damn close. And wait a minute, very quick cover in the first 10 seconds, too. That could have been extremely quick. A two count in 10 seconds. The great Tanuki came to play tonight. A practitioner of sneaky style. Oh! Corkscrew. Some sort of corkscrew kick. I don't even know what to call that. He's gonna go for. Oh, Enzigiri! As you know, the Shining Wizard out there. Which is a variation of the Enzigiri now that I think about it. Into the cover. Crosses over, goes for hold 20. Niju Shigatame. And I. I don't I don't think Satoshi Tobu is a man that does the splits all that often. So I'm guessing that hold really, really hurts. Eight minutes and 50 seconds. Plenty of time. Atomic drop. Ooh! Right into the back paws. And straight into the cover. Again, not messing around tonight. It's already been one loss for Yokai Butai this evening. Of course, that was an unusual type of combination. The Tanuki Ball Buster. And if you've ever seen the balls of a Tanuki, that's saying something. I'm gonna go for the claw. No, he's not. Or at least he's not gonna get it! Samoan drop! By Satoshi Tobu. He is not Samoan, but he's got the build to pull off that move. And the referee a little late on the count here. And that bit of good fortune allowing the great Tanuki to kick out. And uh oh, simple but effective. Ultimatus Black knows that's trouble. And his ears have still gotta be ringing, or his antennae, I should say, have still gotta be ringing. Yeah, these two, I believe this is actually a first time meeting between these two in one-on-one -on -one competition. Great Tanuki. And Satoshi Tobu, Great Tanuki comes into this match 9 and 5 in his AWL career. Satoshi Tobu is 11 and 9. So the experience advantage go into the big guy. Both in the AWL and in professional wrestling in general. Satoshi Tobu took the longest time of anyone, the oldest ever graduate of the AWL Dojo. As Satoshi Tobu now trying to breathe through the claw and the fur of his opponent. The Tanuki claw hold. And he's going to go maybe for another Tanuki ball buster, but doesn't get it. The flurry, the flurry of offense, those palm strikes, bright hands. Whipping clothesline or whipping chops. Into the corner. Sapatu Tobu trying to exert his dominant physical force here. 
Dr. Jacobo a long, active career on the Japanese deathmatch circuit before he even got into the AWL dojo. And he was the oldest ever graduate, but that makes him a wily veteran. And he has incredible power. Simple but effective. One, two, three, and Ultramantis just looks on knowing there's nothing he can do. One more, one more time, you're not gonna get one more time, he doesn't need one more time. But you can take a look on the replay. The barrage of blows from a couple different angles there. But in the end, simple but effective, the pump handle slam into the win. Here is your winner. Oh, and that means you can see it on your screen. Chiba Kagi, the submission, the sign of submission versus the Deathmatch Brawler next week for the Intercontinental title. Main event, ladies and gentlemen. They're tag team partners, they're friends, but it's still Tiger Mask versus a Black Tiger. What more can you ask for in Japanese wrestling? a buzz in the arena they know this is a match you do not see every day this is a big fight atmosphere this is the match everybody paid for where's the music something wrong with our music i think oh there we go the following one is scheduled for one ball there's another one in this match but he has to be this way right the copy of the chair the Golden Tiger, a Season Zero original and one of a scant few in the AWL to actually be in the 100 win club. 118 wins in his nearly 200 matches in the Animated Wrestling League. This is his 199th match in the AWL. If he wins this match, his 200th bout will be against one of his own students, the AWL Grand Championship. A complicated relationship between these two. And his opponent, also fighting out of the Unified School of the Tiger Sky. He is the number four rank in the AWL Best Four. Tiger the Dolphin! Tiger the Dark, 43 wins, 29 losses. Less experience in the AWL, but he's gone through a lot of Probably a more rigorous training regime and a more rigorous upbringing in the in professional wrestling than Tiger Mask 2. One of the survivors of Global Wrestling Monopoly. If you've seen the Tiger Mask W anime, or Tiger Mask Double anime, that's this guy. The AWL was briefly conquered by Global Wrestling Monopoly. I had to call a couple of dozen Global Wrestling Monopoly shows at one point, worst time of my career. But one of the only survivors of that roster in the Animated Wrestling League is this man. And I've said for a while, don't sleep on Tiger the Dark. He's the number four rank, but the AWL Commissioner has decreed that these two will fight for the number one contendership. Because I think the commissioner wants to see this Tiger vs. Tiger match as much as we do. Ten minutes on the clock. And we are off. Tachiai. A couple of strikes. Notice how Tiger Mask 2 knows how to perfectly position himself away from that flying attack. And now going into some grappling holds. I have no idea what they were just saying. 
I think they're saying this is weird. It is kind of weird. These two have been a tag team. These two have been AWO World Tag Team Champions a couple of times with each other. But right now, they are fighting for the, an opportunity for the greatest prize in the game. And going now. Oh, and no, up, down, and DDT! And I was wrong earlier. This is actually the 198th match for Tiger Mask 2. If he wins tonight and he wins the title, his first defense would be his 200th match. And that would take place at the season finale. I don't, I, and you got to know that Tiger Mask is thinking about that. From being a rookie, from being a refugee from a defunct wrestling company, coming into the AWL in season zero, his own time as a black tiger, before earning his stripes, earning the right to call himself Tiger Mask 2, when the original Tiger Mask was forced to retire. The original AWL Tiger Mask, separate dynasty from New Japan, by the way. And now raising up Tiger Mask 3 over in Canada on AWL Strong and Free. He's got to know that his... Uh, oh, oh, Usagi DDT. You're a Torah drop, perhaps, you might call that. Tiger the Dark! Oh, God, that hit very, very badly. Collar and elbow. Tiger Mask has got to be thinking that he's already passed on the mantle. He can't have... He's got to have fewer matches ahead than he has behind. I don't think we're going to see a 400th match from Tiger Mask 2 capping off the 20th season of the Animated Wrestling League as the AWO Grand Champion taking that title into his 200th match of the season finale. What a capstone for an incredible career that would be. We've said for so long, Tiger Mask 2, the greatest wrestler, can never hold the AWO Grand Championship, and he has never held it. He's the Oshogatsu Taikai Champion. He won the New Year's Tournament 2023. Ooh! But Tiger the Dark looking to maybe step out of the shadow, pun intended, of the Golden School of Tiger Style, the Unified School. Maybe he wants some individual Golden Glory for himself, and he's looking for the Black Tiger faint kick, and nails it! Jumps over, he's gonna go straight into the cover. Doesn't need anything fancier than the Tiger Faint kick. The one, two. Tiger the Dark, a former Intercontinental Champion. Oh, right, the shadow does not fall across the body of Tiger Mask. Both these men of the top caliber in the NWL. Black Tiger Suplex, one, two, 2.8. At the very least, 2.8. He's getting a fight forever chant, and I really do believe these two could. That's I don't like that chant. I don't think there's anybody in wrestling usually who can fight forever. These two absolutely could. Japanese arm drag, transition, Fujiwara armbar. The Fujiwara armbar into the cover, one, and you notice a lot of our wrestlers lately have been doing that. The submission hold isn't working, transition to a cover as quickly as possible, try to get your opponent off guard. And these two know each other so darn well, they're both going to have to go deep into the repertoire, maybe even try to pull out something the other hasn't seen before. And that's not going to work. He's Tiger the Dark has tried that a few times now. Tiger Master sees him coming and sidesteps. Spin kick to the midsection. The shadow will fall, perhaps. Tiger the Dark. Senton. 
moonsault. Tiger the Dark, maybe looking for the Darkness Driver, countered into a DDT. Darkness Driver, the original Tiger Bomb. Those are definitely weapons in the chamber here going up. Knee drop, King Kong knee drop. Does not connect with the fourth time of the match. The springboard splash misses clean. Four minutes on the clock. Going up, face it. I think, I think Tiger the Dark managed to catch himself a little bit. The damage was done, kicked to the midsection. No, the Tiger Bomb blocked. That had to have been a Tiger Bomb attempt. Or maybe a Tiger Breaker, but it was blocked either way. Double underhook. Butterfly suplex, maybe even call that, maybe even call that an inverted Tiger suplex. And a step through. This is going to be a setup for the Sumatran Stomp. Up and down. A move that's virtually uncounterable. Into the cover. One, two, 2.5. Less than four minutes remaining on the clock. Tiger Mask looking for his 119th win. Kick to the midsection. He's got it. He's going for it. Tiger Bomb move. And the referee calls the Tiger Bomb the knockout. I do not blame the man. Here's your winner. Tiger Bomb. Two. It's going to be a Generation Gap map next week for the AWO Grand Championship. But for tonight, thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, all that stuff. Put it there. Kimari Dog.